So today we'll talk about the medical relevance and importance of palms and nail beds. How they can help us in diagnosing various diseases, give us clues to their diagnosis. The best form of self gratification is beauty. Of course, all of you will agree to the fact that palms laden with multicolored mehendi or the nail beds under covers of beautifully colored nail polishes look mesmerizing. But have you ever wondered about the clinical relevance, about the subtle clues that those palms and nail beds lying under the cover of such colors which enhance beauty of human beings could give? Starting from the basics, look at the palm creases. Are they darker, of the same complexion or lighter than the generalized skin surface of the palm? That indicates pallor, which is an objective indication clinically of anemia. The person may suffer from any chronic disease or may be deficient in nutrients or may be suffering from some hemolytic condition, anything which causes anemia. So we could gradually grade the anemia mild, moderate and severe, though mild is usually based on the hemoglobin levels as we get from the laboratory test. However, we can guess that the hemoglobin level is below 11, perhaps if moderate or severe below 7.5 or below 5 as the case may be. Apart from pallor, we look for ictus. Is there a yellowish discoloration of the palm? Then it means that the bilirubin level is high. Are we having any pre-hepatic, hepatic or post-hepatic cause of jaundice? That gives us a clear indication. Next, we will look for cyanosis or acrocyanosis to be specific. Look at the tips of the fingers. Is it undergoing a bluish discoloration or is the exposure to cold water or such substances indicating a color change of blue starting with white then blue and going on to something like a reddish hue that could mean a Raynaud's disease initially the blood flow less pallor white then accumulation of deoxygenated blood bluish hue and then compensatory hyperemia causing the reddish hue is there any such thing? Is it only an acral cyanosis due to stasis of circulation? Or is there some bluish discoloration of the inner aspect of the lips and the tip of the tongue? And thus it is a congenital cyanotic heart disease or a central form of cyanosis which is also manifesting itself peripherally as we get from the fingertips. Next we will look, is the person suffering from any hypoxic state as a result of which the vascular endothelial growth factor which is very hyper responsive to hypoxia is causing proliferation of soft tissue just under the periangual beds that means under the finger nails which could lead to clubbing is it grade 1 is there fluctuation in the nail bed is it grade 2 increase in the anterior posterior and the transverse diameter of the nail and also the appearance of the shamrod sign obliteration of the rhombus or the diamond which is formed when we oppose our finger nails is there obliteration of the levy bond on the normal onychodermal angle? Is it grade 3? Is there soft tissue hypertrophy under the nail bed? That means, are we suspecting a parrot beak appearance or is it grade 4? A drumstick like appearance due to hypertrophic osteoarthropathy. If it is present, what is it due to? Some pulmonary cause? Bronchogenic carcinoma, bronchiectasis, maybe an interstitial lung disease, empyema, lung abscess. Is it a cardiac cause, congenital cyanotic heart disease, subacute bacterial endocarditis, atrial myxoma? Is it due to a liver cause, primary biliary cirrhosis, primary sclerosing cholangitis, other forms of cirrhosis? Is it due to an inflammatory bowel disease? We need to make sure. Some cardiovascular diseases like subacute bacterial endocarditis also leave their stigmata on the human palm. The thromboembolic and immunologic phenomena can be manifested in the form of Janeway lesions on the palm and the pulp, Osler's nodes near the distal interphalangeal joints as well as nail fold infarcts and splinter hemorrhages near the nail bed. In patients of aortic regurgitation, we witness something which is called the Quinky's sign, which is a peripheral sign. It is the alternate erythema and blanching of the nail bed after application of pressure during the ventricular systole and ventricular diastole respectively. 
This can be corroborated with the radial and carotid pulse to check for the particular phases of systole and diastole. What happens is during a particular cardiac cycle, some amount of blood is left behind in the left ventricle due to the leaky regurgitant aortic valve which has to be pumped out forcibly during the next cardiac cycle thereby increasing the cardiac output causing this hyperemia during the systolic phase and some amount of blood regurgitates back through the leaky aortic valve from the aorta into the left ventricle and there's also some peripheral runoff and let off which leads to this blanching during the ventricular diastole phase. Can some hematological diseases have manifestations on the palm? Yes, of course, we have the iron deficiency anemia which is manifested by coelonychia or spoon-shaped nails which can be corroborated with uh, a microcytic hypochromic picture in the peripheral blood smear along with low iron and ferritin stores and increased total iron binding capacity in the serum iron studies. Can some hepatic and renal diseases have manifestations on the palm yes if a person is suffering from cirrhosis or chronic liver disease there is a defect in the estrogen metabolism which leads to hyperestrogenemia which leads to telangiectasia or the dilatation of capillaries which is manifested by palmar erythema due to capillary dilatation in the palmar vessels as well as it can be further corroborated by spider angioma along the necklace line, loss of facial axillary and pubic hair in males, loss of libido, gynecomastia in males and amenorrhea in females. Along with that, if a person is suffering from a hepatorenal syndrome, he may suffer from hypoproteinemia and that hypoalbuminemia is often manifested as white nails which is known as leukonychia. However, this can also occur in intrinsic renal disorders. Neurological and endocrine diseases can also have their impact on the palm. Shake hands with your patient. Are they warm and moist? That could indicate a thyrotoxicosis. You could corroborate it with features of polyphagia with diarrhea, exophthalmos, and a goiter along with tachycardia, flushing, heat intolerance, and palpitations. Is the hand cold and moist? Is the person suffering from anxiety? Is the hand disproportionately large as compared to the other parts of the distal limb? Is there protrusion of the jaw, malocclusion of the teeth? These features of pronathism and prominent malar ridges as well as supraorbital ridges along with increased heel pad thickness and kyphoscoliosis could indicate acromegaly excess of the growth hormone after epiphyseal closure so these subtle signs can help in the diagnosis of neuroendocrine disorders genetic diseases like down syndrome and turner syndrome can also be diagnosed by their stigmata on the palm is the person suffering from a curved fifth finger little finger clinodactyly along with a single simian palmar crease and corroborated with low IQ and cardiovascular disorders which are inborn in nature. It may be a Down syndrome patient having a sandal gap as well. Is the person suffering from a short fourth metacarpal along with having bilateral cubitus valgus, genu valgus, set ears, breast atrophy, webbed short neck, short stature and amenorrhea with streak gonads. The person may be suffering from Turner syndrome and be a female who looks less of a female. Rheumatological disorders have varied manifestations on the palm and its appendages. A person suffering from osteoarthritis will have heberdens and Bocard's nodules on his proximal and distal interphalangeal joints. A person suffering from rheumatoid arthritis will have drumstick-shaped fingers along with swan neck, boutonniere or buttonhole deformity and Z deformity affecting the proximal and distal interphalangeal joints along with the wrist joint. A person suffering from systemic lupus erythematosus will be suffering from dactylitis nail infarct splinter hemorrhages and distal digital gangrene along with renal hematological 
immunological and cutaneous manifestations like the malar and discoid rash and also may be complicated by serositis and arthritis. A person suffering from psoriasis could have manifestations of psoriatic arthropathy in the form of arthritis mutilans wherein there may be absence of the distal phalanges from the distal interphalangeal joint and some manifestations on the nail like nail pitting, onycholysis or separation of the nail from the nail bed, transverse white buse lines or subungual hyperkeratosis. Psoriasis both in its arthritic and cutaneous manifestations can leave its imprints on the palm. Arsenic poisoning can also cause appearance of mise lines or transverse ridge-like lines on the nails which if present along with raindrop pigmentation on the temporal regions and cholera-like features after intake of some food item could refer to a case of arsenic poisoning and these remnants of the arsenic may remain on in the keratin tissues of the hair and the nails even after death or the body being burnt or cremated. Fungal infections can find their way into the web spaces and the paranoichal folds and need to be investigated. Along with that, is the patient suffering from a throbbing pain in the pulse space? It may be a case of Whitlow. You have to check for swellings in the palmar spaces which could be palmar abscesses especially in the web spaces. So there lies the combined medical and surgical importance of having a look at the palm. Last but not the least, we could also assess the prognosis of the patient or the degree of its disability by looking at the length of his nails. Nail growth, as we say, is normally 0.1 mm per day. So by calculating the number of days which the patient has not been able to cut his nails by measuring the nail length from the root to the tip, we can have an estimate of the degree of debility or hospitalization of the patient. So finally, to conclude, we may say that the closed fist and efforts may bring us success. The lines of the palm may determine our destiny, but a careful inspection of the open palm and noticing these subtle changes can help prevent the complication of various ominous diseases. Hope this session was helpful. Thank you ladies and gentlemen. Hope you enjoy.